Greetings Frontline Teach, this is Val. Uh, welcome back to part four of CD4 and viral load. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is viral load results. So viral load tests, uh, the point of them is to measure the amount of virus in the blood. Uh, we don't measure them in semen, in vaginal fluids, or in breast milk, right, which are the other four body fluids that transmit HIV. Uh, so some specialized studies have measured the viral load in those fluids, but mostly when we're talking about the viral load tests, we're talking about, again, a tablespoon of blood. Um, so I mentioned this to say that it's not clear that there's a direct correlation between the amount of virus that's found in the blood and the amount of virus that's found in the semen or in the vaginal fluids or in the breast milk. Uh, we believe that there's some relationship there and that if there's a lot of virus found in the blood, there's probably going to be a lot of virus found in the semen, but we haven't done, the, the studies haven't been done to prove or disprove that. So, uh, most of what we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about blood. Uh, it's also known as the PCR test. Uh, polymerase chain reaction uh, is that decoding that alphabet soup there. Um, and these tests help us to figure out how much damage HIV might be doing to the immune system. Um, it also helps us to figure out if the meds are stopping the virus. So um, these tests, like I said in the first piece of this lesson, it doesn't, a high viral load doesn't mean that someone is unhealthy or that they feel sick. It means that a lot of virus was found in their bloodstream. It's not necessarily the same thing. Uh, if the virus is drug resistant, if someone's on meds and the meds aren't stopping the virus. The virus keeps replicating um, and and making more and more babies of itself. Uh, then viral load tests can show us that a long time before other signs that we have. So that's another thing that viral load tests do. Um, and a viral load, uh, the test isn't sensitive sensitive enough to show us that there is zero virus in the bloodstream. Uh, there is a threshold below which um, the test says a, a, a result is undetectable. That doesn't mean zero, it's, it means below a certain threshold. The threshold used to be 400. Viral load tests used to, if there were fewer than 400 particles in a tablespoon of blood, the test would call that undetectable. The threshold is much lower now, it's 40 or 50, depending on which test you use, but it's still not zero. Um, the test can't find the virus in the blood, doesn't mean the virus isn't there. Currently the tests can't find the virus if there are less than 40 or 50 HIV virions in that sample of blood. Now virion is a fancy 50 cent word that means a single virus. The test used to be less sensitive, like I said, and undetectable was below 400. So you can tell that this is a this is a process that's evolving. Um, we uh, find out more every single day. Now there are some myths about being undetectable, and undetectable status is, um, for many doctors, the gold standard of HIV care. Uh, they expect that we put someone on meds and the goal is undetectable viral load. And you can see their point. The you know, if there if there's not enough virus around to be found by a test, that means there's less damage being done to the immune system, which is a good thing. Um, but that mindset, the sort of undetectable is for everybody, uh, and that's the that's the be all and end all of HIV treatment has produced some myths, um, including that the virus is gone, um, that the virus can't be transmitted, uh, and that people who are undetectable are doing better or feel better or take meds better than those who aren't undetectable. Uh, and Magic Johnson, bless his heart, he really uh, did a lot of damage. Um, at some point he received a undetectable viral load and he said that that meant that he was cured. 
Uh, and unfortunately, that's not true for anybody, uh, even someone with a personal trainer. Uh, so when do we test viral load? Well, first, we want to test viral load at the time of diagnosis. So someone gets an HIV test um, and it comes up positive. This is one of the first tests that we do, viral load and CD4 test, and they give us what's called the baseline. Um, we Most people who aren't living with HIV never get a baseline CD4 because that's not a test that's done regularly. Um, but everybody who is diagnosed HIV positive should get a baseline viral load and CD4 test done immediately. Um, and we want people to get tested every three, four, or six months after that. Some people see the doctor quarterly, so four times a year. Some people see the doctor three times a year. Some people see the doctor just twice a year. Um, but every time someone sees the doctor, uh, we should be testing HIV viral load. Now, that doesn't count if somebody sees the doctor every week for something else, uh, but we want to get it tested at least twice a year. Um, better probably is three to four times a year. Uh, that's the sort of national expectation of uh, clinical standards is uh, three to four times a year. And we want to test viral load right before someone starts meds. And we want to test viral load at two to eight weeks after starting meds to see if the virus is responding to the meds being in the system. And we want to test viral load if there's an unusual or a surprising test result. We want to get that done right away. These tests aren't perfect, and the next section is going to tell you a little bit more about how they're not perfect. Um, but again, like I said in the first section, what we're really looking for is the trend over time. Any individual test result doesn't tell us that much, and any individual test result might have a lab error in it. So what we're really looking for is the trend over time. Next is the last piece of this curriculum. Uh, we're going to talk about something called the rule of three. Uh, see you there.